Hi class, my name is Renata Robinson and today we are going to talk about a skill it takes to become a better leader. That skill is focus. We all have our own strengths. Some of us were born with a natural inclination towards those gifts, but mostly those gifts are a result, result of our experiences and practice. Throughout my work life and interpersonal relationships, I've always heard the same compliment. You are a machine. How did you finish that job so quickly? Well, my first job in America was working for a countywide tourism bureau. As the new girl, I often was tasked with tedious number crunching about hotel statistics. My boss would leave me with a task expecting it to take me days. When I would finish by the end of the day, he would just look at me with a dropped jaw. How did you manage to knock that out so quickly? Well, the truth was, I had spent years in Eastern Europe school learning that skill. I learned to organize my tasks and eliminate distractions. I didn't grow up in luxury, so I learned quickly that if I wanted to be successful, I needed to focus. All this has culminated in working for an accounting firm and multiple private clients, and to soon be achieving my master's in accounting, all while juggling two kids, a family, and a job. Someone on a much larger scale with focus is Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla. is widely known for his intense focus in advancing technology and space exploration. His determination to achieve brazen goals, such as making humanity a multi-planetary species, has driven the success of his companies. That takes focus. I say this speaking to a room full of future business people, so let me share a few tips that you can apply to harness the power of focus. First, eliminate distractions. John Maxwell, author of many books and programs to become a better leader, says the following: traction, not distraction. Traction is the opposite of distraction. Traction means to draw or pull in, while distraction means to draw or pull away. We find traction when we do things that draw toward us what we want in life, and we find distraction when we do things that pull us away from what we want in life. Distractions are noise. Focus on the signals. Musk said in an interview with Inc.com, "Signals are events, comments, experiences, and observations that can improve you, your employees, your product, or your company as a whole. Noise is what we confusingly identify as signals, but in reality, it's just pressure to go with the crowd or follow others' demands. It's really that simple. Identify and focus on the right signals and the best people, and success will be wholly attainable." Distractions can be small or large, things or people. Learning to identify compartmentalized distractions helps employees and leaders alike. We've all been stuck not knowing where to start or had too many tasks to effectively complete them. You may have already heard that making a list is helpful, but have you ever heard of Eisenhower matrix? It's a fancy term for breaking down your task list into four groups that help you prioritize your tasks by urgency and importance. Number one, urgent and important. These tasks require immediate action and are crucial to your goals. They should be your top priority. Number two, important but not urgent. These tasks are essential but don't require immediate attention. Allocate time for these tasks to prevent them from becoming urgent in the future. Number three, urgent but not important. These tasks demand immediate attention but don't contribute significantly to your goals. Minimize or delegate these tasks whenever possible. And number four, not urgent and not important. Tasks that are neither urgent nor important. Avoid these tasks or handle them during your downtime. Most importantly, review and update this matrix regularly. Be realistic and flexible with it in order to better focus on your end goals. Design your schedule and time management around your most important goals first. And once you've applied this method, I guarantee your progress will be much less chaotic, making it much easier to focus. So now you know a few effective practices to improve your focus. How does this apply to being a better leader? In many ways, but here's a few. First, a focus leader has a clear vision of what they want to achieve. This clarity allows them to clearly express their goals and objectives to the people working for them. When people can understand the leader's vision, they are able to orient their efforts and work towards a common purpose. And number two, focus helps leaders make well-informed decisions. When a leader is focused, 
They can analyze information more effectively and avoid getting distracted by irrelevant factors. Decisions become more decisive and are based on the organization's long-term goals. I hope this presentation has given you some tools to achieve higher focus towards your goals. As it has been proven time and time again by a long list of successful people, focus is a major component to success in leadership. Focus enables a leader to create a clear path, make better decisions, and focus allows a leader to effectively communicate and manage their time and to more easily adapt to changing situations. I'll leave you with a quote by Alexander Graham Bell. Concentrate all your thoughts upon the work in hand. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. Focus enables leader to create clear path, make better decisions, build resilience, and foster accountability within the team. It enhances communication, time management, and adaptability, all of which contribute to improved leadership effectiveness and overall success. Thank you so much.